producers of the deadly substances. She noted that though her non-governmental movement, How the Living with Noel Soludo, has been leading the drug elimination campaign, there is a great need for a united response in the face of what drug abuse and its prevalence has done to the society, especially the youth. While promising to work closer with the agency, Mrs. Soludo advocate, advocated for a stronger community involvement in the fight and the need to follow up every case until justice is served. Earlier in his remarks, the Anambra State Commander of the NDLEA, Mr. Daniel Onyishi, raised concerns about growing drug abuse cases in the country, with Anambra State also among states with high prevalence. He noted that Nigeria alone has 14.4% drug abuse prevalence rate, rate as against the global 5.5% disclosing that in 2018 alone, the agency intercepted 3.38 tons of drugs in the state. The NDLA board stated that one of the reasons for the visit was to formally welcome Mr. Soludo as the chairperson of the Anambra State Drug Control Committee, which will be an action-driven crusade that will see to the complete elimination of drug use in the state. The people of Mpo in Idemle North local government area of Anambra State have expressed appreciation to Governor Tuoma Soludo for embarking on the construction of Mpo inland door Zojo to Nobi Road. The people made their feelings known through their President General, Chief Godwin Amadike, who led some members of the town union on court's call on the Commissioner for Works, Engineer Ifani Okoma. We bring you the report. People of Mpo cannot thank the governor enough for seeing the importance of the road and moving in to carry out reconstruction work on the road to ease movement and prolong the lifespan of their vehicles. Chief Amadike also appealed to the governor to urge the contractor handling the Ekempo Afonpo road, which he said has not been receiving attention for now, to expedite action and to also consider the road from the town's civic center to their traditional ruler's palace for construction, pledging the support of Ndi Mpo to the present administration and assured him that he will get all their votes when the time comes. Thank him for the job. Him and the uh, Ego Governor, uh, CC Saluda, are doing at Mbo. Especially the road from Mbo Junction to Kempo, that's the inland doors, which the construction is ongoing now. So thank him for the good work they are doing. Receiving the group, Engineer Koma said that the road started from Nkwa Obosi to Eko Obosi to Ekempo and to Afon Mbo, saying that government is doing a lot of roads in Mbo, including Mbo Junction, Inland Doors, Ojoto, Nobi Road, which will have flood plain from Obosi to Owelaja to Meteorological Institute and to Second Niger Bridge for proper discharge of water that causes flooding in front of Inland Doors. Engineer Koma reminded them that state government will ensure even distribution of resources as it concerns working on roads in all communities of the state and therefore cannot confirm to him that the civic center to Igwe's palace will receive attention now. The commissioner urged people of the area to take ownership of the roads and ensure that they are maintained, saying that the poor attitude of communities caused a lot of setbacks to the government who plunged resources to existing roads instead of using same to do new ones, thanking the Mbo PG and his entourage for the visit. I'm trying to make sure that these roads were last. But the route will not last if it's not well maintained. Just like any human being, we need to maintain yourself. So we are asking our people that once we've done this road, that they take ownership. The PG was accompanied on the visit by the financial secretary of the town union, Mr. Aboy Oba, and the protocol officer to the Mbo PG, Comrade Ebere Osakwe. In Oka, I am Ngozi Obileri for ABS News. Algerian Institute of Building, Anambra State Chapter, has condemned the structural defect of the two-story building collapse at Ochanjamem Market in Onija. The chairman of the, the chairman of the institute, Mr. Kinsley Nwek, stated this when the members of the institute went on a feasibility study on the collapse building site at the market. Our correspondent, Esther Aswanya, has the details. Building lacks a lot of professional touch with wrong placement of materials. On the second two-story building close to the collapsed one, which is still under construction, Bundanweke noted the need to seal up the building as it has been affected by the resonance and vibration from the ground during the collapsing process. Material testing lab should have a lot of work to do on the build in that building behind and also the buildings, even the ones in front, which may have been affected by the 
vibrations caused by the collapse of this first building. Lamenting the ugly incident, the Secretary General on the South Local Government Area, Mr. Paul Onwachala, who said they are in morning mood, stated that they started rescue operation as soon as the incident occurred on Monday evening, mobilizing the excavator to the site, their emergency and health departments, and were able to rescue at least five victims who are receiving treatment at the hospital at the council's expense. He noted that seven-man committee, which include the council town engineers, has been constituted to look into what transpired and recommend ways to prevent future occurrence. On the second building, the Onitra South Secretary said they are adhering to the governor's instructions on removal of the building as soon as they were done with evacuation of the collapsed debris. That instruction from governor on how to approach this thing, and we are following that instruction religiously. Dr. Ifa Nechi, a member of the Nigerian Institute of Building, Anambra State Chapter, observed the major cause of the collapse. Dr. Nechi further observed a lack of professionalism in building construction, saying it was done by a quack contractor, no engineer, and no builder to supervise the work, adding that if professionals were involved, a lot of wrong works at the building could have been corrected and the building would have been saved from collapse. You can see from what has happened here, no professional is involved in this job, and which is very, very unfortunate. On their part, Builder Iken Naopala, the vice chairman of Nigeria Institute of Building, Anambra State Chapter, and Builder Chijo Kukiki, chairman of private sector, Anambra Chapter of the Nigeria Institute of Building, said that the standardization structure in buildings construction is a process where every profession in the building environment is involved and each plays its role, saying that if implemented, there will be no building collapse in the country. They lamented the loss of lives and properties and the fate of the families of the victims and called on the state government to involve the whole building professionals in building constructions in the state. The visit featured an inspection of the collapsed building and the second standby two-story building still under construction. Esther Asanya, ABS News. In sector now, the importance of guardians and counselors cannot be overemphasized, especially in guiding students in the right career path. Guidance counseling is the process of helping individuals discover and develop their education, vocational and psychological potentialities, and thereby to achieve an optimal level of personal happiness and social usefulness, while guidance counselors on the other side are professionals who provide these services. Our education correspondent, Huyen Anibogo, tells us more on this topic. Chairman, Post Primary School Service Commission, PPSSC, Oka, Professor Nkechi Ikedugu, stated that guidance counselors must be available and accessible to direct the students on the right career path so they will not make mistakes. She appealed to parents not to impose their own career choices on their children, but should rather allow their children to study the courses that they have passion for, even as she noted that it is the responsibility of schools to tell parents areas where their children are doing well. I also want to appeal to parents not to force our children to do what they don't like. Let the parents allow the children to choose the career of their choice. And it is the responsibility of the school to tell the parents where their children are doing well, whether arts, science, and then the, the guidance counselor will now direct the child to the right path. The guidance counselor of Community Secondary School, Abuno, Mrs. Chimwe Okeke, who has a 10 years experience in the profession, stressed the importance of choice of career in a student's life, adding that in counseling, she has group and individual counseling sections where she teaches the students what career is all about, opportunities and benefits therein. Mrs. Okeke, who said she operates an open door policy added that she equally counsels parents where she advises them not to force their own career choices on their children but to allow their children to make their own choice. Well, the choice of a career for a student is very very important. We have what we call group counseling sessions. In these group counseling sessions I go from one class to the other and I teach them what a career is and then the opportunities they will have in life in choosing their careers the benefits of choosing good careers and then what will equally help them to make a choice of good careers 
On the notion that school is a scam, a student of community secondary school, Oreri, Ms. Chinecherem Mwachuku, asked youths to bury the idea that school is a scam and emphasized that education is a key to success in life and going to school will enable them to achieve their life's dream. Education is the key to success. Without education, there is nothing you can do in this life without education. As in like, when you go to school, you can be able to achieve your goal in life. But when you don't go to school, you'll be, you know, roaming around in the country as the country is now. Education will help you to improve your dreams. Queen Anibogo reporting for ABS News. Disenchantment from different segments in the country. The Nigerian Defense Headquarters has introduced what is called Celebrate Nigeria Challenge to spur Nigerians to think, talk and act positive about their country. The Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, who disclosed this during an interaction with journalists on the ongoing operations of the Armed Forces of Nigeria in different theaters of operation across all the geopolitical zones of the country, urged the citizenry to endure today's pain for tomorrow's gain. Princess Ekwi Ajide of our Ab Abuja Bureau completes the story are determined to end terrorism and insecurity across the country and therefore taking concrete steps in that direction as creating a safer environment for citizens translates to eliminating all threats hindering the safety and security of citizens speaking on the success of troops in the month of february major general buba said synchronized strikes between the ground and air forces on terrorist enclaves killed significant number of them them, adding that these strikes had significant adverse impact on the terrorists. According to him, during the period under review, troops neutralized 974 terrorists, arrested 621 of them, rescued 466 kidnapped hostages, recovered 1,573 assorted weapons, 23,345 assorted ammunition, and denied oil thieves an estimated sum of over 8 billion naira. Over 6,100 rounds of 7.62 millimeter NATO ammunition were equally recovered in the month of February. 512 rounds of 9 millimeter ammo was also recovered among several others. He cautioned that if these terrorist groups do not come to the table in peace, the armed forces will continue to punish them with overwhelming military force, especially as they recently took delivery of additional air platform to further enhance their later capabilities in Abuja. Princess Ilkwi Ajide reporting. Okwala community, one of the gala speaking communities in Anambra West Council area, recently hosted people from all walks of life during the 2024 Fala Festival of their traditional ruler, Igwe Joseph Ajodo. The festival also brought sons and daughters of the community together to celebrate their traditional ruler, Igwe Ajodo, who they call Ega Okwala, as the first traditional ruler of the community to rule for 23 years. Our correspondent, Amako Koe, covers the event. Her report. It's also the chairman, Anambra North Traditional Rulers Council. The Ofala got to its climax when the wife of Egashi Okwala, Lady Nonye Ajodo, presented Kula notes, followed by all the rituals that accompanied breaking of the Kula, addressing his subjects and all that graced the occasion while breaking the Kula notes. Igwe Ajodo said his reign has been about bringing the community together to champion peace and oneness so as to achieve their desired goals, which has given them the desired progress through their sons and daughters who became agents of development. While praying for his community, Igwe Ajodo commended the efforts of Governor Chukuma Soludo in bringing infrastructural development to Ukwala as they are now enjoying 247 water supply, a health center, and town hall. <laughs> Kaini ne wei yikono. 
felicitating the Okwala, the traditional ruler of Owele, Igwe Raymond Donoja, say that as a neighboring community to Okwala, they have it so good in their relations with the community under Igwe Ajodo, who will always be at the path of truth, stating that all infrastructural development came to their community because of the efforts of Igwe Ajodo. <laughs> expressing his joy at the successful ceremony the transition committee chairman of anambra west council area mr felix ikeshi maintained that egashi okwala is a revered peaceful and straightforward king who always sought for peace and bears the burden of the anambra west at heart he's one of our revered, uh, he's a man of the people he's a very peaceful Igwe, and uh, we are indeed very proud of him Igwe Ajodo also used the Ofala Festival to confer chieftaincy titles on some deserving individuals who contributed to the development of the community, among whom we are Chief Dan Ozemene, who he gave the title of Odenjinji Okwala. Bishop of the Anglican Diocese of Mbamili, Right Reverend Dobiora Uzochuku, had earlier presided over a short interdenominational service heralding the Ofala Festival, paying off homage to Igwe Ajodo and other cultural displays place added glamour to the 2024 Ofala Egashe Okwala from Okwala Anambra West Council area Amaka Okoye ABS News it is the election year in the United States of America and President Joe Biden and Donald Trump are making competing visits to the US border in Texas to seek and stress that can tackle the illegal migration along that border the issue is that one of the most polarizing in U.S. politics and will be central to this year's presidential election. November's contest looks like to be another showdown between the two men as President Trump continues to win in primaries in the Republican Party. Mr. Biden accused his Republican rival who spoke of the very dangerous situation at the border of hindering his efforts of crackdown on crossings. Republicans in the House of Representatives are blocked by partisan border reforms in what Democrats say is an effort masterminded, masterminded by Mr. Trump to deny them a win before the election. In Texas, Mr. Trump said he would take care of the issue of illegal migration if he was re-elected. He has previously promised mass deportations if he wins power again. The issue is an intense focus because more than 3.3 million migrants have been detained crossing into the U.S. illegally during Mr. Biden's tenure, a higher number than other under previous presidencies. However, experts say the reasons for the spike are complex with some factors predating his government and sitting outside America's control. And with that story from the uh, politics in the United States of America, we bring to an end the breakfast news this morning. Remember that you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at Anambra Broadcasting Service. You can subscribe to our YouTube at ABS Television. Okay. On Instagram, we are at ABS Radio TV. And um, on X, we are at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. Before we go here, the main point again, we told you that Governor Soludo has received commendation on the construction of more inlanders Ojo to Nobi Road. We also looked at the importance of guidance and counseling in shaping the future of students. We told you that the Nigerian Defense Headquarters has begun a Celebrate Nigeria Challenge as U.S. Donald Trump promises to deal with illegal migration if elected. Governor Chuoma Soloda has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's continue to give him maximum support for the task ahead. And that's the news this morning. Thanks for joining us. I am David of Bokwasele. <laughs>